The acquisition of specimens has a lot of serendipity connected with it. Uh, it's hard to go out and say, we need this or we need that, because you may look forever and never find specifically those things, but you may in the process come across something uh, that you didn't expect to find and that you can't live without. Uh, of course, uh, having that feeling of can't living without something can be dangerous, especially if you're on a limited budget like a museum is. Uh, so you, you know, you have to pick and choose your opportunities and sometimes you have to get lucky. Uh, I consider that I got very lucky in having the opportunity to acquire this gold crystal here. Uh, it had just recently been obtained by the dealer in Brazil uh, and he actually heard about the discovery at Alta Floresta and sent a runner, if you will, far to the north, the state of Mato Grosso, uh, to acquire whatever specimens he could. He, uh, the runner uh, was actually a dealer uh, on the street in Uro Preto, and he jumped on his motorcycle, motored up hundreds of miles up to the area where these were found and bought the lot. And uh, the crystals from this lot ended up in a number of notable collections. The Smithsonian obtained one uh, that to me is a poor brother to this one. Uh, and uh, I was fortunate enough to be there shortly after uh, the dealer acquired them. And so I got first crack and this was my choice. This is a rather nice bonito white specimen here. Uh, beautiful crystallization, good crystal size, uh, beautiful luster. Uh, this specimen has an interesting story, and uh, the other half of it uh, is even more remarkable. Uh, this piece here was donated to the museum in a collection uh, back in the 1950s and it was actually donated by two brothers uh, who were teenagers at the time and today are pretty well known in the gem business, uh, the Kazanjan brothers. Uh, their father uh, arranged for them to purchase this collection and donate it to the museum. They didn't know what they were donating though when they donated this specimen because it was completely covered with the white material you see here, naturalite. It wasn't until many years later when I was looking through the collection that I decided that there might be something a little more interesting on the inside. And using hydrochloric acid, I etched away uh, much of the naturalite and exposed the bonito white crystals. Now, while this is a very pretty specimen, the one that you uh, will see on display in our gallery is really quite unique because it's a stacking, a wreath, if you will, of bonito white crystals. And that specimen was attached to this one. Uh, the reason that it's not attached anymore is that the front of that specimen and the front of this specimen uh, actually face one another. So we had to separate the two in order to display each one properly to its best advantage.